Okay. Let me erase all this. I can edit this out. Blah, 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 blah. Okay. Okay. Here's a real quick protein and sequencing problem. Um, ties together a lot of cool concepts and a lot of things that uh, if you can do this problem and you can do it quickly, and then you shouldn't have to have anything to worry about with the uh, protein sequencing on the test. Anyway, here it goes. A nona peptide or a nine amino acid peptide. So Nona peptide was divided into three samples and each sample was subjected to cyanogen bromide, chymotrypsin, and trypsin. The fragments obtained in each of the treatments were separated, hydrolyzed, and subjected to amino acid analysis with the following results. So the cyanogen bromide fragments. So before we go into this, let's look at what let's look at what cleaves what what. So CNBR cleaves after methionine carboxylic terminus. Um, chymotrypsin cleaves the aromatics W Y and F at the carboxylic terminus. And trypsin cleaves after arginine and lysine at the C terminus as well. So what it's giving us is that cyanogen bromide yielded two fragments. The first one being I M Y and V, not in that order, we're talking about free amino acids, and I'll explain that in a minute. And then A, C, G, K, and W. The chymotrypsin yielded three fragments. cysteine, leucine, methionine, tryptophan, valine, and finally isoleucine and tyrosine. And the trypsin yielded two fragments of alanine, isoleucine, lysine, methionine, tyrosine, tryptophan, and a tripeptide of cysteine, glycine, and tryptophan, and I'm sorry that wasn't tryptophan, it's valine. Okay, so we have, uh, okay, these were the, the three digestions and then hydrolyzations, so there's no particular order. These aren't peptides in this order, they're just free-floating peptides, and what that means is what's happening is you're taking a protein sample in a test tube, probably. Okay, and you're dividing it up into three equal alquats. So, probably into Eppendorf tubes. Okay, inside of each one of these Eppendorf tubes, then you add in the CNBR the chymotrypsin and the trypsin. And what that edit, what that does is it cleaves after the, for the CMBR, we have a peptide of X, 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 two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And your methionine is here. Then you're gonna cleave right here and you're gonna end up with a seven peptide. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven and a dipeptide. So a heptapeptide and a dipeptide. So anyway, what you do then is once it's hydrolyzed, actually it's not even done yet, 
it's run on a gel and it's separated. So the seven and the two would separate by size down your gel where the number two would run faster than the seven when you dumped it into the well and run it by electrophoresis probably, or chromatography even. So what you would do is remove these by cutting them out, digest them with, uh, digest the gel, retrieve the peptides, and then run a six molar HCL and it would completely break up all the bonds between them. So you would end up with free floating uh, amino acids and that's what those are, the free floating things for each for each uh, fragment. So anyway, so the way you tackle these problems is to take and write out, this will be where your ultimate uh, peptide, where the, the final peptide is written out in the, in the proper sequence. So we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, write out the CNBR. Do the same thing in roughly the same alignment. Two, three, four, five, six, eight, nine. Write out your uh, trypsin. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And we need two for chymotrypsin. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and one, two, three, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. And the reason why we needed two is because chymotrypsin does not cleave after glycine. So that means that the glycine in this fragment had to be at the very end of the peptide because if it was at the very, very beginning, it couldn't be because chymotrypsin doesn't cleave after it. So there would have been no fragments to follow glycine. So it had to be at the very end. Okay. The reason why there's two alignments here is because we could have gotten an IY here or we could have gotten an IY here. And what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and write IY into both of these spots. Okay, that means there's a W here, chymotrypsin cleaves after W. There's a W here, so the longer fragment, the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 uh, hexapeptide, or whatever you want to call it, had to have been either here or here. So, with that in mind, let's go up here to our CNBR digestion, okay? First fragment's four long, okay? And the only way you can get a, a five peptide is if, is if it was cleaved after methionine, so therefore methionine had to be in the middle of the peptide. So one, two, three, four, put an M, there's the five. We don't know what order they're in, we just know what's been cleaved and where the cut has happened after. Okay. The last digestion is the trypsin. So once again, in order for this to happen, trypsin cleaves after R or K. We have a K in the first fragment piece, so therefore it had to have been in there. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Had to cleave after it. It's the only way you're gonna get another three fragments. Okay. We have a problem. We have a known sequence of six that's conflicting with one of our trypsin alignments. Remember, we don't have, we don't know which one of these is right. So let's go ahead and we know this is right. So let's go ahead and erase this guy. Okay. So now here's where the, the what we know comes together with what we don't know. We know I and Y have to be here. Let's bring it up I, Y. We know, we don't know what's in the third spot. We know there's a methionine here. We don't know what's in the fifth spot. We know there's a lysine here. We don't know what's in this spot, but we know there's a W and G here. Okay. 
This fragment, part of the trips in the second fragment, yielded a C, G, and a W. In order for that to be true, that means that this guy, this W, G, that came up, you know that's true, that means that there's only one thing that can be in there, C. Coming back to this, we know that I and Y are in here because of I, M, Y, and V. So what goes here? What does that leave us with? I hope that helps.